How's it going? Um, I was looking to go camping this weekend and um, they, they said there's a lot of beers around that area. I'm not really sure how to go about if, if you could kill a beer. Can you kill a beer with your beer hands? What, beers? Kill a beer. Would you say beers? Um, kill a beer. Kill a beer with your beer hands. Are you absolutely crazy? Have you lost it? Personally, I don't really know, mate, but you might need to head on Google and take a look on there. As you know, it's where you can get all the answers anyway, isn't it? I've got like a little bow and arrow lying around. I'm not sure if that would do a good job or, you know, if that could do anything. A bow and arrow, mate, is that even legal? I tell you what, let me know once you get the answer because that's quite interesting to know just in general. All right then, mate, chat to you later. The big tip is don't fight a beer with your bare hands. The beer is stronger and has teeth. Okay, let's try something else, like the bow and arrow, haven't I? Alright, a forum. Let's take a look at the forum and see what happens here. Ah, oh, bloody hell. I don't even know if I can trust these people. Mate, to be completely honest with you, after all of that searching, I still couldn't find the answer. I had a look on Google, spoke to a few people, and no one really knows. Now, whilst that's a funny entry to the video, I just wanted to amplify how it is for someone when they're looking for an answer and they just can't get the answer on Google. And this is something that we call underserved topics. When you're finding a topic that doesn't really have an answer or hasn't been answered correctly, or by an authority. There's so many pros to having these types of keywords. Not only do they bring high amounts of traffic, but they're also quite easy to rank for because you're finding places where the questions in some cases haven't even been answered before on the internet. One of the downsides to these kind of keywords is the fact that they're not gonna be highly monetizable. So say for example, if someone's looking for a navigational search, like where can I ride my bicycle during COVID lockdowns or wherever that may be, that's more based on location. So these kind of searches are not always gonna be highly monetizable, but you can place ads and they are very good suited for ads um, on any page. This is a quick video interrupt. I just wanted to say this video has been sponsored by SEO Buddy. It's also ran by a friend of mine, to be honest, Romain, who's the guy behind this. Now, this is an absolutely brilliant product. It actually allows you to run through an SEO checklist and go step by step on how to build, rank, and monetize a website, to be honest. Um, build and rank most specifically. So it goes through steps. You can see in this example video here, you're taking through installing WordPress, setting everything up. It shows you the difficulty, allows you to tick it off whether it's done or not done. And then he gives you an SOP, which is a standard operating procedure for each part. You get like an in-depth breakdown, an instruction manual on how to do each step. If you're brand new to blogging and you're finding it a little bit difficult of how to rank a brand new website, then this is probably a great product for you. At the moment, we're currently doing this at a discount where you can sign up for my audience specifically only, where you can check out the link below and get yourself a copy of this. All right, so the first thing you need to understand is the types of keywords that you need to be targeting to use this method. So these are gonna be question keywords, um, usually long tail, which I identify personally as four words or more within the phrase, okay? And what I've actually got down here is a list of these keywords that I've come across over the years and whatever of doing SEO and these are the most common ones that usually start off with a, you know to make it a question phrase okay and you can actually download that list just below this video don't need to complicate this you know you can get hold of it very quickly okay another place that you can use to find these types of question keywords is answer the public so answer the public's pretty good if you just put in like any random broad search term and what it will do is allow you to find a bunch of different questions that are being asked. You've got it right here. They've got like how, when, where, so on and so forth. So it really gets you thinking in the right way on here and it's good enough. But one thing you need to understand is whenever you do keyword research or you know topic research, whatever it may be, you need to go source your keywords. That's the first step. But the second step is qualifying them. So you can never just take this and go and immediately write about it until you've manually assessed the competition. So if we look at this, which train spot in character? So this is all related to the TV show, okay? And we were talking about this uh, program. Let's just have a look at these questions here. Okay, so the answer's right here for this on Wikipedia. So this wouldn't be an underserved uh, topic. But as when I started at the beginning of this video, like, um, and I put in this term, can you kill a beer with your bare hands? That was something that wasn't directly being answered or, 
Um, can you kill a bear with a bow and arrow? It's not directly answering exactly, you know, what you're looking for. So it's saying you can, it is, it is an answer, but I do believe this could be better. And let's actually have a look at the page. So what I would do is, is manually come on and, and take a look at this. See, so it's pretty, it's pretty okay, it's not bad. Yeah, so what are a few of the things that you're gonna be looking out for to qualify this keyword as being of low competition? So what makes it a low comp keyword, okay? Or phrase or whatever you wanna call it, okay? Okay, so if we were to take a look at this, um, there's a few different things. So one of the things that I'm looking at here is, um, you know, I'm really looking at, is, is there forums popping up? I think that's probably the first thing I look out for. Like if I start seeing a bunch of forums, it's usually a good indication that this is a low comp keyword. And that's because there's user generated content here. And that tells me that it's not directly being answered by a blog, otherwise that would be there, yeah? They're indirectly answering this. So they're saying like, you know, bears are not hard animals to kill with a bow and arrow. So that's true, yeah? So it's answering the question, but not directly, it's indirect. I personally think I could create a better answer than this. And ultimately you need to ask yourself the question whenever you're looking at these kind of, um, you know, these kind of topics to write about. You need to ask yourself, can I create a better resource than what's there? Because if you can, you're usually gonna do good. Is like talking about shooting a bear, okay? So it has mentioned about the bow and arrow, and you can see that Google actually pulled it from all the way down here. Like, so this is the sentence they pulled from the conclusion. We can most definitely um, target this and create a better resource around this particular phrase that's being searched. This isn't really of high competition. I wouldn't really class that as high competition. They are indirectly answering it, but I don't really see a threat. I'm not threatened by that. This here, we'd need to take a look at the forum and make sure that it's just a quick few answers that are going on and no one's you know put that hard work in to answer it okay so this again you know it's not really in depth there's not an in-depth answer there how to kill a bear with a bow i don't even need to read it because it's talking about how to kill a bear not can it okay so even though you know commonly if we see that we'd probably think okay well if it's saying how to then you probably can like sort of thing but again it's a forum as well so it's of low competition so we've looked at like the top three and say for example our goal is to get up here well we've just identified that there isn't really a high competition up in this area one of the other things that i use a lot of the time is this area down here related uh, searches to see other topics that you might be able to find. So if we've put this in and it's not quite of low competition or it's a good one, you can sometimes come and click here and this will give you a different angle of how to come around this keyword or other related queries that people are typing in and also interested around. And this can allow you to create um, a lot of topical authority on your site. This is something you could probably put within that same article because if you're saying, can they kill them? Then you might say, okay, you might go into like, you know, where to kind of shoot a bit if, if you did have a bow and arrow sort of thing, okay? That's saying like where on the body, you know, so that's what it's asking, okay? Where to shoot a bear with a rifle. So that's a complete separate article because you wouldn't go, uh, uh, in the bow and arrow one and also talk about it on the uh, on the rifle but you could interlink those articles so that would be pretty good for that you're finding keywords with um <clears throat> with answer the public but we can also find keywords on other sites so we can do this more manually as well or we can do it with tools so if we're going to do it manually you could just type those take those words that i've given you the will should why the list and whatever else and just type them into google so where do you know beers hibernate or blah, 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 come from. And you just go through what income score referred to as the alphabetical soup method. And all that is, is going A, B, and seeing what pops up C, you know, and then once you've done where, you might go to what do, or what do beers, let's see what comes up. Or you could do asterisk and then beer. That also gives you a bunch of different searches. Okay, so what do A, B, yeah, and if you want to go extra, you can go A, B, A, C, A, D, and then after you've completed that A forward slash all the alphabet, you just go through that whole cycle. So that would be here all day, but that's exactly how you would do that method. And you just go through and, and you, you keep checking the keywords. So each time you're checking them manually, and you exhaust that for each type of uh, search, okay? So if you've got R beers, so you'd come through here and do exactly the same thing, you know, R beers, A, A, B, A, C, A, D. 
You get the idea, that's exactly what you would be doing. Okay, now the other way is quite interesting because it's something I haven't um, really shared on YouTube. It's something that I said I was gonna share a while ago and I didn't share it. But what I am gonna do is just share it publicly now, okay? And this is what I call a reverse forum method, yeah? All right, so this is the reverse forum method. And what you do here is you just drum in any of the kind of forums that you find. You can do this either with niche related forums or just big forums. But what I would recommend is use the big forums first and then once you identify some of these keywords, then in those results within the top 10, you're gonna see other forums that are niche related and then you can reverse those as well. This isn't 100% accurate, but it gets you like a good 80% of the way there. Okay, so what we wanna do is if we're putting in something like Cura, we need to then tell the tool um, to identify words that are related to the industry that we're going into. So if we put like beer and we put that, we're saying it must include the word beer, okay? So then we will uh, put that in here, yeah? So I'm gonna put that and press enter. Okay, now the next thing, is this gonna short it down to, shorten it down, okay? Um, you might even put like what, where, and whatever else, yeah? And then I'm gonna say from positions like seven or eight or something like that. So if it's in the top eight, it's usually a good good chance that it's a low comp keyword. Um, 10, I mean, yeah, sometimes you might find a forum in, in positions 10, but then the top nine are all like accurate on point articles, okay? I mean, if you really wanna slim it down, you might put like top five, okay? Okay, and then this is where you're really gonna start to find these low comp keywords. Okay, we could put five words or more, that will help us. And, th and now we've got a bunch of uh, different questions, okay? So when we put five words or more, it's obviously just gonna pull out a bunch of questions because they're usually questions that are, are, are phrased that long, okay? And then when we come down, you can see, so we've got like silverback gorilla versus grizzly bear. I don't really know, that's quite a vague open search, a broad search. Polar bear versus grizzly bear, are bears related to dogs? Okay, that's quite a good question. Cura ranking number four for that. So that's quite interesting. Um, as we come down, we can see all these other ones, so on and so forth. And what you can do is basically, if you were to put in like a niche specific forum, you'd keep the same metrics. And you can do this with any tool, by the way. You do not need to use Ahrefs. You can do this with Key Search. You can do this with SEMrush. It doesn't matter what tool that you're using. Now, if it's a niche related forum in the first place, then you don't actually have to put in um, the word must be included because it's already included as it's niche related, you know? So all the words they show up for will be related to your industry. And that's honestly just about it. There isn't really much more to it. That's how you identify keywords and find them and source them and then how you qualify them to be of low competition. And just by doing this, you can build up an entire website, well, like most of your website success in the early stages by using these kind of keywords and creating the correct type of resources around them. Stick around for future videos if you wanna see more about creating content on these types of keywords. If you did enjoy the video, then make sure to smash the like button. Leave any comments of questions that you have. I will have many future videos. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out the SEO checklist from my friend Romain. It's an absolute brilliant resource for you to get started with building a blog if you have no experience. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.